All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about this bill that was passed in the Senate on Wednesday, and that's going to block Chinese firms from trading on the United States Stock Exchange and what it means to the overall stock market in general. And I do have another exciting milestone to share with you guys, but I'll save that announcement towards the end of the video, so stay tuned. Now, this is this bill that is in question, as you can see, it's also called the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act. And this is just another escalation between the trade war and the economic struggle that's happening between the United States and also China. Now, even though there have been other events that have allowed this bill to pass with both bipartisan support, the most recent catalyst that brought the whole Chinese company drama into the front line was the $310 million accounting fraud that occurred within the Chinese coffee brand Luckin Coffee. Now, Luckin Coffee has been dubbed China's Starbucks and is founded back in 2017. And with the help of four banks, which includes uh, Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse, it IPO'd back last May, on May 2019. And it was in such high demand that on the first day of trading, the stock jumped nearly 20%. And it was basically a Wall Street darling. A lot of hedge funds and investment companies were excited to invest in Luckin Coffee because it had explosive growth and it had more stores basically in mainland China than Starbucks. However, last month in April, it was discovered that the chief operating officer, he basically inflated last year's 2019 sales figures by more than 310 million dollars and because of this scandal um the luck and coffee is currently listed on the nasdaq the nasdaq is seeking to delist luck and coffee entirely and what is more infuriating is that the coffee chain they had a secondary stock offering on in january 2020 and it's been revealed that some of its biggest shareholders basically cashed out right before the scandal was exposed and as a result there are several lawsuits that have been created and are ongoing in order to persecute uh, luck and coffee on ground of this accounting scandal. This is the first one that says, did you buy the Luckin secondary stock exchange and they want to do some investigation and that will result into a lawsuit. This is another one I found. Basically, it's also another lawsuit that is going to be um, held against Luckin Coffee. There are two other Chinese companies that have their own scandals and this is the first one I want to talk about. It's for the Tao Education Group and they provide after-school tutoring services in China. Article summarizes that an employee worked with an external vendor. They basically inflated the sales by forging contracts and other documents. In this other company, uh, GSX Tech Ed, this is another online tutor provider and it's been a accused by Muddy Waters Research, which is an investment company, that almost 70 to 80 percent of his users are fake bots. Now the company of course naturally strongly opposes to this finding and it says that Muddy Waters they lack a basic understanding of his business. Now there's these kind of scandals I'm sure you'll be able to find more if you do your own research that basically highlights the biggest issue that we have to face as investors when dealing with Chinese stocks and companies and it's their lack of transparency. Now following the massive uh, scandal that occurred with Enron, the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board or the PCAOB uh, it's basically, this is their website. Uh, it was formed to audit public companies in order to protect investors and to provide accurate accounts of each individual companies. But China specifically, they don't allow the PCAOB to audit companies that are registered in China and also in Hong Kong. Uh, most of the Chinese companies, they end up saying that they have significant government links and they basically claim that they have state secrets in order to circumvent um, their audit requests and it is the specific lack of transparency that the holding foreign companies accountable act is looking to fix uh, this bill was uh, introduced by senator john kennedy and the hfca once again it aims at all foreign based companies but it's easy to see that it's mostly targeting just chinese companies now there are two specific rules that are stipulated in the bill and the first one is that foreign owned companies they must prove that they are neither owned or controlled by the foreign government and the second one is that they must submit financials to be reviewed by american auditors uh, who will of course be overseen by the pcaob and if they fail to comply for three consecutive years then the Chinese stocks or whatever foreign based stocks, they risk being delisted from the United States Stock Exchange. And this is one of Senator Kennedy's tweets. And you can see his honest opinion of what he thinks about China. He writes, the Chinese Communist Party cheats 
and the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act would stop them from cheating on the United States Stock Exchange. We won't let foreign threats to Americans' retirement funds take root in our exchanges. You might be thinking that this is great news to just get rid of all Chinese stocks. And yes, this bill, the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, it is just another ammunition in the escalating economic war between the United States and China. But we have to be cautious and we have to remember that this act, if it does pass and companies end up delisting, it's going to hurt both sides. It's going to hurt the United States as well because the United States stock exchange is home to major Chinese companies like Alibaba and Baidu. Now this document is a bit old. It's been published in February of last year. But according to this report, which has been created by the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, there are currently 156 Chinese companies listed on the United States Stock Exchange and with a total market cap of $1.2 trillion. But remember, this figure is back in February of last year. The very top company is BAB, which is Alibaba Group Holding, and its market cap is currently $458 billion. But if you look at their market cap today of May of 2020, it's currently $536 billion. And do you know who owns a lot of share of Alibaba? Investment giant BlackRock and also Vanguard. They are top holders of not just Alibaba, but also Baidu as well. And as you can see, Alphabet and Walmart, they both own big stakes in JD.com. And each trade and listing by Chinese companies, they generate big revenues in terms of fees for both the New York Stock Exchange and also the NASDAQ. And besides these other American companies that invest in Chinese companies, billions of dollars from pension funds and college endowments have flown into Chinese companies because a lot of people are chasing higher returns and foreign companies are able to do that because in a way that they are able to tap the biggest consumer market in the world. If you look at your own portfolio or if you have a mutual fund or an ETF, you might unknowingly even be investing in Chinese companies as well. And the White House have taken steps. Um, they basically have been telling federal pension funds to stop investing billions of dollars in their retirement savings in companies because they say it poses threat to the United States national security. It's very unlikely that China is going to comply with this bill, the HFCA. But we have to remember that just because Alibaba, for example, is not going to be able to stay listed on the United States Stock Exchange, that's not a death sentence to them because they have the ability to move to other stock exchange like in London or Hong Kong. And Alibaba basically does that. In addition to having their stocks traded in the United States Stock Exchange, they also have their shares being traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. As a matter of fact, Baidu, which is another major Chinese company, they are also considering the possibility of delisting from the NASDAQ and having a secondary listing in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Now, the reason why I bring all this up and why I wanted to talk about the bill in general is because I wanted to remind you just how connected the world is. If you think this bill passing is just going to hurt uh, China. That's not true because once again, a lot of American companies and pension funds and college endowments, they also invest in Chinese companies. This is going to bring more volatility and it's going to escalate the current trade war that is happening. I mean, we've seen recent rhetorics on basically Trump blaming China's for making the coronavirus much worse than it has to be. And also recent escalations between the United States and China trade war. And let's not forget about Huawei. As a result of these restrictions, uh, Chinese state media officials, they're also suggesting to retaliate against large United States companies, including Apple and Boeing. Now, I'm sure as we continue on our investing journey, we'll encounter good news and also bad news that will add to the sell market volatility that we are feeling right now. But this is just another reminder for you to take a deep breath and to remain calm. This is why diversification is key. Like even if you do end up owning a Luckin coffee and they spectacularly implode, you won't get destroyed in the process. And also don't think that you'll be safe by just simply avoiding um, Chinese companies or other specific companies. Let's not forget about Enron's accounting scandal or Wells Fargo fake account scandals or even Volkswagen's Dieselgate scandal. Investing in the stock market has risk and I hope that this video is yet another reminder for you to invest cautiously to know what you're investing into and just in case there's some insider things that happen that we're not aware of make sure you diversify your holdings so you don't have all eggs in one basket with that said let's turn it around for more positive news because i have something exciting to share now if you saw my last video you'd have seen that i recently passed 100 subscribers 
uh, we're currently sitting at 126. I wanted to share another milestone uh, within my stock portfolio. So let's go over to M1. As you can see, my M1 total investing amount has passed $15,000 and it's almost getting close to $16,000. And I know $16,000 is anything big if you compare it to other YouTubers like Graham Stephan who has $6 million invested, or the financial education Jeremy who has almost half a million dollars invested, or even Andre, uh, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, who has almost $200,000 invested in his Robinhood account. But regardless, I'm very excited to have reached this milestone personally. Uh, almost $16,000 is a lot of money for me and it's my full investment amount. And basically I wanted to celebrate. So in my next video, I'm gonna to try to get it up as soon as I can. I'm going to reveal what specific stocks I have invested in. I'm going to reveal of my entire stock portfolio. Um, whenever I go on YouTube and I watch the finance channels, uh, these are the type of videos that I really enjoy watching just to see what other people are investing into. So uh, stay tuned for my next video which will once again reveal my stock market portfolio and I hope that gives you an insight to how I'd like to invest or maybe I'll give you an idea of what companies that you might also like to invest in. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video and if you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit the like button. And even if you didn't like the video, make sure you hit the dislike button twice. Leave your thoughts below on what you think of this bill that has just passed the Senate. And let us know if there's any Chinese stocks that you are personally invested in. I think the only Chinese company I'm investing in is Alibaba. So it'll be nice to see if you have any Chinese stocks in your portfolio. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll be back with more shenanigans.